This is Father Bob Warren of the Franciscan Friars of the Atonement. Thank you for listening to this rebroadcast of the Ave Maria Hour radio show. The Friars' popular Ave Maria Hour was first brought to the radio airwaves in 1939, recorded in New York City and on the mountainside grounds at Graymoor, a home in Garrison, New York. These timeless classic stories of the Bible and the lives of the saints came to life each week through dramatic reenactment by professional actors and actresses. You know, friends, Christ once said, do not hide your treasure under a bushel. In saying this, he meant share your gifts, share your talents. The Friars of the Atonement feel the message in these broadcasts remains as powerful and timely as when they were originally aired, and we are so happy to be able to share them with you today. To learn more about the missions and ministries of the Friars of the Atonement, I invite you to visit our website, www.atonementfriars.org. In the meantime, sit back and enjoy this rebroadcast of the Ave Maria Hour. Mother Frances Chavere. The story begins in the year 1833 in Aachen, Germany, a city close to the Belgian border. There stands a magnificent home owned by John Henry Caspar Chavere, deputy mayor of the city, a prosperous manufacturer of that day. His wife is a Frenchwoman, Marie Louise. His pride and joy is his daughter, Frances, age 13. Oh, Papa, you're home early. Early, but not unwelcome, I hope, Frances. Oh, Papa, you're always fooling. (laughs) Mama will be so happy. How is she today? Cheerful, as always. You wouldn't know she was sick. You must remember her in your prayers. I do, always. Go up. Tell her I'll be there in a moment. All right, Papa. Good afternoon, Mama. Did you have a nice nap? Yes, baby. Here's your milk, nice and warm. Put it on the table, dear. Oh, you must drink it, Mama. The doctor said so. My little nurse. All right. Give it to me. And you must get well very soon. I will. Now run along, Francis. You should be out on such a lovely day. Papa came home early. I'll stay until he comes up. You must be very understanding with him, Francis. He's going through a difficult time. I will, Mama. These are strange times. There's something in the air. I feel it. Like when you were a little girl in France, Mama? Yes, something like that. Tell me about it. Oh, Francis, you've heard it a thousand times. I love to hear you tell it. Please, Mama. All right, baby. When I was a little girl in France, there was a great revolution. There was fear everywhere among the nobility, because the people had decided they no longer wanted a king to rule them, but rather a man of their own choosing. My mother and father and I were put in a prison. I was separated from them and never saw them again. They were very bad, these men who did this. Sudden change brings violence. What then, Mama? There was a man named Robespierre who led the people. He died suddenly, and many of the prisoners were freed. I was among them. You think there is such a change coming here, Mama? Not that kind. But there is ill feeling toward the church, especially among the Prussians who rule Germany. Is that why Papa doesn't wish me to go to church? He doesn't want you to stay away on Sundays. Just don't go every day. But I want to go. He has great plans for you, dear. A good marriage and a high place in society. He's afraid if you go to church so often, you'll want to enter the religious life. You mean become a nun? Yes, dear. Well, I don't want that. But I do like to go to church. Then I'll speak to your father. Mama. Yes? 
Why does anyone become a nun? I suppose because they feel God wishes it, and they want it more than marriage and children. But how does one know? Each knows in a different way, I should think. I imagine it's something that grows in you slowly over the years. And then you just know. How lucky I am to be here. Mama, you might have died in France when you were a little girl. And where would I be now? There is purpose in everything. I am only very grateful for these years given to me. To have you close to me. And your sisters. And brothers. And your father. Mama, what's wrong? Nothing. You're in pain, Mama. It's gone now. Why? Why do you stare at me? When I saw your face, Mama, I had the strangest feeling. Marie Louise Chevier never recovered from her illness. And so at the age of 14, Francis became head of the household. Even the servants who might resent or take advantage of one so young learned quickly to respond. Only on one score did they raise objection. There's a beggar at the back door, ma'am. Well, give him something, Fred. It's not my place, ma'am. It's the duty of the head of the household. All right, I'll go myself. I'll see if I can find something for him. Yes, ma'am. Good evening, Fred. Where is Miss Francis going? The beggar at the door, Herr Shavir. Oh, did more than usual lately, haven't they? Times are difficult, sir. Well, you must be generous with them, Fritz. No need to worry, if you'll pardon me for saying so, with Miss Francis as head of the house. Hmm? I haven't noticed. Unless I stop her or Cook does, the house would be bare. <laughs> Perhaps I'd better speak to her. Good evening, Father. I didn't hear you come in. No, you're too busy giving away the house. Fritz, you've been telling stories. Uh, excuse me, I, I must see how Cook is coming on with him. I think you'd better. <laughs> Francis, you must keep your generosity within bounds. I try to, Father. Most of the things I give away, I, I make myself. The clothing I knit and some old things I patch up. That's another thing, young lady. I've seen the light burning in your room far too long into the night. Uh, I don't need much sleep. Now, making things for the poor is a good thing. Not at the risk of your health. Besides, you don't see your friends. Oh, I have lovely times, Father, and you know it. You'll soon be a full-grown woman. You will have your choice of the most eligible young men in Aachen. Or Germany, for that matter. You're not trying to marry me off already, Father. No, no. No, not for a few years yet. Good. And don't worry, you'll approve of my choice. I'm sure I will. Dinner is served, sir. Oh, good. Come along, Francis. I told Cook to bake my favorite roast for dinner. Oh, oh dear, you did? Hey, what's wrong with you, Francis? Oh, dear. Oh, you're not very hungry, are you, Father? Hungry? I'm famished. Come along. Ah, that smells good. Hey, what's this? Fritz, what's this? It looks very good, Father. Well, these are leftovers from yesterday's meal. I told Cook to have a roast. The roast is gone, sir. Gone? Gone where? Oh, we had such a big family to feed, Father. Who did? The beggar, sir. Oh, Francis. But the passing years served only to increase Francis' generosity. She developed into a lovely young woman and took her place in the gay society of that day. Yet she always found time to devote to the sick and the poor. These were happy years for Frances, except that the threat of violence and repression feared by her father and mother for years past suddenly burst into reality. What's wrong, Father? It's come. It's come at last. What is it? You're so angry. The Prussians, those savages. What now? They've begun arresting the clergy. No. Even the Archbishop of Cologne, thrown into jail. I never thought they'd go that far. With the Prussian running things, Germany is always filled with bloodshed. Francis, you better stay away from church for a while. What a thing to ask, Father. For your own safety, child. Can't you see, Father? That's just what they want. But we have no alternative. We have. Francis. Father, you've read your history. 
Every time anyone attacks the church, instead of stamping it out, it grows stronger. Because people won't be intimidated where God is concerned. We've got to go, Father. Francis? Yes, Father? You know, I don't want you on the streets after dark. Did you come home alone? Yes. Were you at St. John's Kitchen again? Yes. There are so many, so many hungry people. Doesn't they close after five o'clock? I was visiting. Visiting whom? Some sick people. Francis, you know how I feel about the sick. You want to bring disease home with you? I'm very careful. Francis, come here. Come into the library. What is it, Father? Canon de Boer was here. He had to leave. Oh, I'm sorry. He's very disappointed to miss you. He brought you something. What? In there. Look. Oh, Father. All for me? You know how much the canon thinks of you. He brought these things for you, too, so. These linens, fine silver plates. He shouldn't have done that. He looks to your marriage as much as I do. I think he keeps alive only to preside at your wedding. And he shall, if I marry. When you marry, Francis. Have you been thinking about it? Well, I've been so busy. Francis, your baptismal godfather was the emperor Francis himself. You were raised in wealth and social position. Your future is charted for you. You look at these gifts. These represent your life, not feeding the poor and caring for the sick. There are others to care for them. But will they, Father? They've always managed before. Now, Francis, I want you to stick to your own kind and your own class. See your old friends like Gertrude Frank. But Gertrude has joined our group, too. Well, it's a relief to know you have company down there. Gertrude's a fine girl, comes from a fine family. Why don't you have her home for dinner? All right, I'll ask her. And Francis. Yes, Father? Remember what I said. This is your life. In the solitude of her room at night, Frances was assailed by mixed emotions, great doubts, and unanswerable questions. As the days passed swiftly, Frances divided her time between the social life of Aachen and her work in the charity group, telling no one of her dilemma. Then one day at St. John's Kitchen, where she was helping to feed the poor, her friend Gertrude Frank approached her. Francis? Oh, hello, Gertrude. Francis? Yes? Nothing. Can I help you? I'm almost through. Wait. Don't go yet. Yes? Do you have something to say to me? Why do you ask that? Because you've been so strange. Several times in the past few days, I've looked up to see you staring at me. I'm sorry? You seemed about to speak to me, and then suddenly you turn away and leave. Francis. Yes? I, I can't. There, you've just done it again. I'm sorry. I've been under a strain lately. Seeing these people, I suppose. Oh, it's getting late. Father will be furious. I must go. Francis. Yes? Can I walk home with you? Why, of course. Come to dinner. Father asked me to invite you. After a pleasant dinner, Gertrude Frank departed for her home. Later in the evening, the canon and some other guests arrived to spend the night. While they were chatting with her father in the library, Frances, tired from her day's work, slipped away. Fritz? Uh, yes, ma'am? If father asks, tell him I've retired early. Yes, Miss Frances. <coughs> hey, the storm is getting worse. It came up so suddenly. I hope Gertrude got home all right. Now, who can that be this late? I'll see who it is, Fritz. Yes, ma'am. Why, Gertrude, the storm, 
I couldn't get home. You poor dear, you're soaked. Come on in. Just let me rest a while. You'll do nothing of the kind. It's much too late. You'll stay the night. I hate to intrude. Let me see. The guest rooms are filled, I'm afraid. Father's friends. But there's plenty of room for two in my room. Come on. You'd better get out of those wet things. <laughs> Ready, Gertrude, I'll put the light out. Yes. Good night, Francis. Oh, I'm so tired. Hmm? I hope you haven't caught a chill, dear. You were looking very pale when you came in. I'm all right. Francis. Yes, what is it? I... Are you religious? I mean, more than the average girl. That's a strange question. I'm sorry. Forget I asked. No, I didn't mean it that way. It's just... There's no way of telling. Did you ever think you saw God? What are you leading up to, Gertrude? Please tell me. Once, when I was a little girl, my mother was ill. I was sitting with her. Suddenly she was racked with pain. It happened often toward the end. But this time, looking into her face, her eyes, suddenly it seemed as if I was looking into the face of Christ on the cross. It, it was a fleeting thing. But in our work, caring for the sick, sometimes I think I see him in the face of every sick man and woman crying out to me. Do you think God could send a person a message through someone else? If he wished. Francis. What is it, dear? No, no, don't put on the light. Are you sure you're well? Please forgive me for asking, but I must know. Francis, when did you decide to become a nun? Don't answer if you don't want to, Francis. What a question. It supposes so much. Have I done anything to suggest that I might be planning to become a nun? No. But you are, aren't you? I don't know how you could know, Gertrude. I've only been thinking seriously of it in the past week. Francis, I must tell you something. I've been trying to tell you for three days, but each time I've lost courage. Yes, I thought you were acting strange. Francis, you will become a nun. And you'll start a new religious order. Gertrude, what are you saying? I kept telling myself I must be dreaming. I wouldn't have told you tonight, but on the way home. The storm came up. I had to come back to tell you. I don't know what to make of this. I had to tell you. But why me? I don't know. Are you sure? As sure as I am of anything. If it was anyone but you, I'd say you were dreaming. Oh, Francis, what does it all mean? I don't know. I don't know what to think. Time passed swiftly, and Frances' days were full. The gay life among the city's elect, and her life caring for the sick and the poor. With the passing of time, inwardly, almost unknowingly, she was planning her future. There's another beggar at the door, Miss Francis. Yes, Fritz. Cook told me. I'm bringing him these things. Why, ma'am, those linens, they're from your wedding trousseau. Oh. Oh, yes, I'd forgotten. Whatever could you be thinking of, Miss? I don't know. One would think you'd forgotten about marriage. 
Yes. Here, take these to the beggar. These linens, too? I won't be needing them now, Fritz. Where's father? In the library, ma'am. See that we're not disturbed for a while. I want to talk to him. Francis Shavir joined the Third Order of St. Francis. And not too many years later, with four other nuns meeting in the city of Aachen, there was formed a new congregation, the Sisters of the Poor of St. Francis, modeled after the saint of Assisi, who had cast off worldly things to work among the poor and the suffering. Although Frances Shavir was the youngest of the small society, she was chosen leader and swiftly proved her qualities of leadership. Slowly, with the passing years, the congregation grew larger. But with its growth came great hardship and even public ill will. One incident brought Frances before a public official of Aachen. I regret the necessity of this meeting, Mother Shavir, but oh, your group has gone too far. It's a public disgrace. But we've done nothing disgraceful. Oh, that is a matter of opinion. To what do you refer? I received reports that you were taking women of the streets into your infirmary. Why, yes. They needed help. We make no distinction. Indeed. They're shunned by every decent woman. Yet you, a woman who has devoted her life to God, take them in and care for them. We must, because no one else will. They're shunned by everyone. But God shuns no one. Our duty is clear. Yeah, but I've had complaints even from some members of the clergy and the sisterhoods. I... Oh, uh, I, I must insist that it be stopped, Mother Shavir. Pardon me, Your Honor. Uh, yes, what is it? The Commissioner of Health sent a message. He says the disease is spreading. It's worse than he thought. Worse? I see. Well, all right. Tell him I'll do everything I can. Uh, you must excuse me, Mother Shavir. This is urgent. What is it? What dis disease did he speak of? Smallpox. <sighs> the doctor warned me. I, I had no idea it was so bad... He feared an epidemic, and now it's come. But surely the city is prepared. No, our doctors are overworked as it is. Everywhere I asked for help, I was rejected. But there is help available. No, no, I tell you, the disease is too contagious. When word gets out, there'll be a panic. No one would risk his life to help. I would. You? What can you do? The nuns in my congregation are experienced in practical nursing, and I can organize others to lend their help. May I suggest that you convert public buildings into hospitals at once? I'll supply the nursing staff. You think it would work? If we act quickly, isolate the sick, check the disease, there may still be time to prevent it from wiping out the city. Uh, very well. I will arrange for the buildings and assign doctors to each. I must hurry. Good day. Uh, Mother. Yes? Thank you. Thank you very much. The sisters nursed the sufferers day and night. And when the epidemic was checked, not one of them had contracted the disease though each was on the verge of exhaustion. Thereafter, the tiny congregation spread rapidly with the goodwill and commendation of the entire city. In the years to come, under the guidance of its founder, Mother Frances Shavir, the congregation of the Sisters of the Poor of St. Francis spread throughout Europe, and after that, to the United States. The first foundation was established in Cincinnati. At the time of the Civil War in the military hospitals, the sisters won for themselves the title of Angels of Mercy, and a presidential citation was awarded for the work they did in caring for the wounded soldiers. Nurse, where's the doctor in charge? He collapsed, exhausted. We've had no doctor here since yesterday. I was afraid of that. I've come to replace him. Quickly, take me to the worst cases first. This way, doctor. 
We use this room for major operations. There'll be no time to prepare the patients. There are too many... They're all prepared, Doctor. They're bringing in the first patient now. Excellent. You will assist me. Yes, Doctor. You did an excellent job, Doctor. When I passed out, I was afraid they were all doomed to die. I'm glad I arrived in time, but don't thank me. Thank those wonderful nurses you have here. Everything was ready for me. I can't tell you how many lives were saved because there was no delay. Yes, they've done more than you can imagine. Well, I must go. There's another battle at Gettysburg. They'll be needing help there. If I may, I'd like to take your head nurse with me. She's amazing with the wounded. Head nurse? Yes, the nurse who assisted me. Oh, yes, yes. Well, she's not a nurse, Doctor. Why, she's the best nurse I ever had. Doctor, the woman who assisted you is Mother Frances Chervier. Mother? Founder of the Sisters of the Poor of St. Francis. I wish I could keep her here, but she's needed to direct all the others. Oh, too bad. Don't worry, Doctor. She always turns up where she's needed most. Today, Mother Frances Chevere is gone. And the first steps have been taken toward her canonization. The congregation she founded today numbers over 3,000 members, with 95 hospitals and institutions in Europe, and 27 in the United States. Nine of these establishments in Ohio, eight in New York State, and others located in New Jersey, Illinois, Kansas, Kentucky, Indiana, Michigan, and South Carolina, all carrying out the work of their founder, who has come to be known as Mother of the Poor.